Hello everybody. Um, this video is uh, going to explain the theory of light propagation in channels. Uh, it has been uh, explained in the paper that uh, is referenced in the description of the video. There are a lot more uh, new things about um, the whole field of electrostatics and light and radio waves in that paper. So please follow up the link and read the whole work. Uh, so the theory of light propagation in channels is uh, aimed at explaining uh, the features that we observe in the photoelectric effect. Uh, what we're seeing here is that light leaving source, leaving the source, does not leave it in uh, spherical wavefronts. So the energy of the wave does not leave a point-like source or a spherical source in spherical wavefronts. Uh, what light does, it propagates along these channels, which you can see in blue, uh, changing shape and changing direction all the time, and uh, over time covering and sweeping the whole volume along, uh, around the source of light. Um, light propagates in longitudinal waves along these channels, and as you can observe, the number uh, of channels uh, is constant for the same intensity. It doesn't change. However, from this we can uh, understand that the intensity of the light produced by the source decreases with the inverse square of the distance because the number of channels falling on unit surface also decreases with the inverse square of the distance. So the farther I go from this source, the fewer the number of channels I will observe falling on unit surface. And that decrease is inversely proportional to the distance. Why is this important? This is important because it explains the most important feature of the photoelectric effect, which is why the energy of the photoelectrons does not depend on the distance from the source, does not depend on the intensity of the source. It is because the farther you go, uh, it is true that fewer channels will hit the unit surface of the uh, emitting metal surface. Uh, however, the energy of the photoelectrons will still be the same because the energy of those photoelectrons comes from the energy of one of these channels that hit the surface. So no matter how far you go, there's going to be uh, a moment uh, in which one of these channels will hit the metallic surface and will eject an electron and the energy of that photoelectron will depend only on the energy delivered to it by one of these channels. So I'm not going to uh, do next is I'm going to decrease the intensity of this light source and you will see that the number of channels through which light propagates decreases. So this tells us that basically the intensity of a light source uh, only depends on the number of this kind of channels that the source is able to produce. So I'm going to decrease the intensity and then I'm going to come back to this intensity level. Okay, so I went down and then I came back. Let's do this again. So 
So my, my plasma globe allows me to decrease the number of fibers to maybe half uh, between the highest intensity and the lowest intensity that I can, that I can uh, uh, observe. So the intensity of the light can uh, change between uh, a maximum and a half. The number of channels that I could see on the surface of the source also changed between a maximum and a half. So again, this is important because we can explain the photoelectric effect without the help, without assuming that light is made up of photons. Basically, this theory of light or propagation in channels replaces the concept of photon. Light propagates in longitudinal waves along these channels, and this replaces the concept of photon that was used so far in explaining the photoelectric effect. Therefore, if we use this model of light propagation, we solve the issue of wave-particle duality that exists today in physics. Thank you and follow up on the uh, article that is linked in the description of this video.